Welcome back to The Everyday Stoic. I'm William Mulligan, and today my talk will be with Eddie Pinero, who is an international speaker. You may know him from his TEDx talks or his YouTube channel, Your World Within, where he delivers um, powerful speeches and storytelling, inspiring stories that he shares with millions of people. I hope you enjoy this talk. And as always, today's video is sponsored by TheEverydayStoke.com where you can get this Amor Fati t-shirt and it supports what I'm doing so I can bring more content like this. Uh, so my name is Eddie Pinero and uh, I'm a speaker and uh, content creator. I have a, uh, a platform called Your World Within where uh, I tell personal stories about sort of the trials and tribulations of, of life. Uh, you know, the wins and losses in ways that hopefully help other people, um, you know, inject value into their own world, see things in a different way uh, that maybe they hadn't before. When was the first time you heard about Stoicism? Probably like a lot of people, it was a Ryan Holiday book, maybe Ego is the Enemy. To me, I was blown away by uh, the breadth of people that use Stoicism in their, their daily lives, um, you know, talking about all throughout history from, uh, you know, generals to CEOs to, um, you know, a lot of people that really add value to society and, and seeing how they look at the world, compartmentalize it and break it down, um, mitigate some of that emotion that, that we feel, uh, you know, as, as human beings making our way through life. What? is your interpretation of Stoicism? Uh, a mental discipline. Um, I think uh, when I think of, of Stoics, I think it's, you know, the, I think of the ability to separate what you can control from what you can't. Uh, I know that's one, you know, uh, piece or component of it, but, um, you know, when I think Stoicism, I think Eddie, what around you is controllable? What can you do with it? Are you lost? Are you mentally stuck or dwelling on things that are unchangeable? Um, and, and how can you best position yourself to win with what you have? Because you have the, the, the strength and the capacity to do that. You can dance in the rain or soak in the rain. It will rain regardless. What is your thoughts on this quote? Yeah, I mean, it goes right back down to that that uh, mental discipline. Um, it's uh, things happen to us, and the, the question is is how you internalize it. I guess, and it's interesting because my brand is your world within, right? And it's, it's in a way that is stoicism. It's how are you internalizing things? How are you registering life mentally? Uh, because that's going to produce your results. I think um, the inclination a lot of the time is to think that the world's going to give us something and it's our job uh, you know, to sort of succumb to things as they happen. Um, you know, we are uh, followers as opposed to powerful individuals leading ourselves. Um, you know, choosing what to see. That famous idea, it's not what you look at, it's what you see. Um, you know, how are you, there's an idea like, two people can look at the exact same thing. One person's interpretation can be the reason they stay where they are, can be the reason they fail, can be the reason they never begin or quit. Another person can look at that exact same situation and say, uh, that's going to be the reason that I succeed. That's going to be the reason something good is going to happen. I'm going to be better because of this. Uh, you know, to me, that uh, epitomizes stoicism, that mental strength, that mental clarity, that decision uh, to find the value. What do you think of this quote? He who angers you controls you. Um, I, a big thing is depersonalizing uh, what happens around you. Uh, you know, when someone treats you, you know, uh, in a way that you're not happy with or something bad happens, uh, again, the, the, our, our sort of animal brain is to think, well, that's, you know, directed at me. That's, you know, an assault on me. It's like, no, incentives drive the world. And they did what they did because in some capacity they thought it was best for them. Um, 
And so there's a real advantage in being able to take a step back and understand that. Um, this is not the world versus you. This is a lot of moving parts. And the question will always be, what do you do with those parts? This is your opportunity um, where others might you know, react in a bad way or get mad or get defensive. See it for what it is and understand that the upside is not in attacking that thing or being defensive, but extracting the value from it in, in moving on. That will always be the winning formula. Is a stoic mindset only available for a few people? I mean, it's 100% available to everybody. I think, uh, you know, another simple way to put it is, is uh, you know, repressing and channeling emotion. Um, it's, it's pausing. It's taking a step back and looking at the world um, as opposed to, you know, being caught up in, a, in, in one moment of, you know, whatever, X, Y, or Z. Everyone can do that. Uh, it's a skill, it's a muscle, it's not easy, um, but that's why we read the books, right? That's why, uh, you know, we study the Senecas and the, the Marcus Aureliuses, and, uh, you know, we want uh, to sort of wrap our hands around that idea that a lot of the, 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 the greatest value in life is hidden in plain view, it's stuff we walk right by. And, uh, you know, if we can discipline ourselves to find uh, value in those little things and to, to, to pause and be at peace with our thoughts and how we're internalizing life. Tremendous value, tremendous upside. What is your favorite Stoic literature? Like I said, Ryan Holiday has been a big one. The obstacle is the way. Um, ego is the enemy. But also, like, you sort of branch off, you know, in those books. You know, he, he mentioned Steve Jobs as a student. Of, of stoicism, George Washington as a student of stoicism. And so, you know, I've, I've read George Washington's uh, biography as well as Steve Jobs' uh, Isaacson biography. And uh, they're, they're really masterful depictions uh, of people that uh, remain in check, remain concentrated and focused on the big picture. Um, I, I think George Washington's biography is one of the most important uh, books I've ever read. And it's funny when people ask me, what books do you recommend? That's, that's always one of them, just because of the way he was so deliberate and the way he processed things and was able to see the big picture, um, kept his composure in, in very uncertain times. That's something that anyone can take and pocket and utilize in their lives. So, uh, yeah, I would say to answer your question that, that certainly um, those uh, more known books is where I started. But then hearing these names, uh, it just, you know, you want to jump out and start learning about these people and how they thought and how they carried themselves. Is there a specific situation in your life where a stoic mindset has helped you? I think as a as a creator, an entrepreneur, uh, you know, all the time, uh, it's, you know, you could say uh, an interesting one is, uh, you know, the, the the comments on YouTube. Like, a ton of them are, and most of them, ninety nine point nine percent of them are positive. But the reality is, you put yourself out there, at some point, right? You're going to get some criticism. You're going to get uh, some negativity, and it's like, there are things you can control, and there are things you can't. Um, you're never going to make everyone happy. That's something you can't control. But the question is, there's a constituency of people uh, that do need what you're providing. And are you doing that in the best way for them? Um, are you uh, creating a product or service that's changing or impacting them in a positive way? Uh, and that understanding has been incredibly helpful, especially when it's easy to get worked up or, you know, we have this... Um, what is it? Maybe it's called the negativity bias, but you know, you could eat at a restaurant 99 times, great food, one bad dish. And that restaurant forever is the, the restaurant of the bad dish, right? So we're always pulled to that sort of negativity, I think naturally. And so again, like pausing and asking yourself, that's something that's not going to change. Is it worth exhausting our time and energy and effort there? Or do we want to look at the impact and, and really look to expedite that? Why do you think it's important to not let emotions get the better of you in decision making? 
because emotional decisions usually are not uh, the best decisions. So, um, you know, human beings are emotional and we tend to act on emotion, but that's also where we get into trouble, right? It's like if you can pause and weigh out the rationality, um, you know, not in a way where you're, you know, making a pro and cons list every time you're doing something, but particularly when you're angry or annoyed or frustrated, you know, they, they tell you when you're a kid, right? Count to 20, count to 100. Uh, you'll come back looking at the thing differently. Um, that's not because you're a different person. It's because the emotion has subsided and you have this clarity where you can think long term, not in the moment, tomorrow, next month, next year, what action uh, is going to help uh, get me to that destination? It's a very different question than what feels good to do right now in the moment. And obviously we'll bring out, uh, you know, two very different results. What is your opinion on the avoidance of hedonism? It comes down to, you know, what, what matters to you, uh, what's, what's meaningful to you. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with partying if that's what you want to do, but know that you're sacrificing something on the back end. Um, you'll never be as productive uh, after a night of being at a, at a club as you are, uh, you know, if you went to bed and came at it with everything you have. And so it's a question you need to ask yourself, what feels good now versus what do I want? Um, and that's no, you know, that's certainly not rocket science. Those two things are always uh, in tension uh, with each other or most of the time, right? What do I want now versus long term? And, you know, that's what makes humans so incredible is that, you know, we can think big picture. We can sacrifice the now for the later. Um, it's just a difficult thing to do. And it's why, you know, a simple book, uh, The Obstacle is the Way, for example, uh, where Ryan Holiday brings out a bunch of different examples, uh, you realize that the, the, the challenging thing in front of you, the thing that's maybe not the most comfortable now, simultaneously is the thing that has the most value uh, for later. I'd like to know your thoughts on this quote. It is the power of the mind to be unconquerable. So the quote by Seneca, it is the power of the mind to be unconquerable, uh, it to me speaks to uh, a critical mindset for anyone trying to get to point A to point B um, because it often feels like the walls are collapsing down on us, right? Like the world is pushing back and creating resistance. Um, there's this powerful idea that you have not failed or lost until you have made a decision to stop because of the fact that, you know, that resistance at times does push us down. That resistance at times does make us question ourselves. Uh, we do, uh, you know, fall in the moment but the decision to get back up and keep going means not only have you not lost, you are better than you were prior to the issue. So the mind being unconquerable, it means internalizing that resistance in a way that it's, it's wind beneath your wings. It's the water that makes the seed grow, right? The very same thing that might cause someone else to say, well, I'm done, right? Here's where I draw the line. Um, another person to say, okay, what have I learned? I'm better. Here's the value. Putting it in my back pocket, moving on to the next thing. You don't fail until you stop. Otherwise, uh, you're still in motion. You're still in progress. You're still attacking uh, what it is you set out to attack. So it's a quote that rings true. The mind uh, is unconquerable. Uh, you know, as long as you don't let anything or anyone else in there, uh, you know, with regard to, to where you're going and what's meaningful to you, um, you'll go as far as you decide to. Where can people find you? Eddie Pinero on YouTube. Um, you'll find a lot of my, my thoughts and, and speeches uh, articulated in, in videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So definitely check me out there. I'd love to uh, connect with you. I hope you enjoyed today's talk with Eddie Pinero. If you want to show him some support, then follow him. The links will be down below. Um, if you want to support what I'm doing, then please consider becoming a YouTube member or subscribing or heading over to my Instagram at The Everyday Stoic. We've almost got 400,000 like-minded Stoics in this community of Stoics that are sharing 
these ideas based around Stoicism, their advice, their answers on these questions that you may be asking all the time. Um, and if you want to head over to my website, www.TheEverydayStoic.com, you can get your hands on the Amor Fatty t-shirt. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.